In this video, we're going to build RustFlix. RustFlix is not a streaming service. It's actually a command line interface application that tracks users, videos, and the number of times each user has watched each video. It has a set of nested commands. So I can do RustFlix user create, and then I specify a name and an email, and it'll create the user. I can do RustFlix user show and it'll show me all the users. Same thing for videos and same thing for views as well. If I type RustFlix without specifying any arguments, it gives me this detailed help prompt. And if I choose a subcommand and I do RustFlix user, it gives me a help prompt for the subcommand. So it's got this really nice help system that's auto-generated by the clap framework, which I'll get into in a minute. So if you're building a command line application, it's tempting to be lazy and just parse the arguments manually using if else statements and match clauses. But with a complex nested command system like we have in RustFlix, that would quickly become unmanageable. So this is what it would look like if we decided to manually parse the arguments. And you can see this quickly becomes unmanageable. This is only a small subset of the entire functionality that the program is gonna have, and it's already looking pretty unwieldy. So the right way to do this is to use the most popular argument parsing library in Rust, which is called CLAP. CLAP allows you to specify one or more structures that represent the arguments that the program is expected to take, and CLAP will automatically generate the parsing logic and the help system for you. Let's quickly look at how to do that. So we're gonna add a file in our source directory called args, args.rs. There's three key traits in the clap framework that we're gonna leverage here, and those are args, parser, and subcommand. For simple applications, you might only have one struct that implements the parser trait. So we're gonna use the derive macro here and implement debug and parser. And for our parser struct, we're also gonna use the clap macro and say that in our help system, we wanna output the author, the version, and a description of the program. And then we're gonna define our structure. Again, if this were a simpler app that takes maybe two or three arguments, you could specify those here. You could do, and this is the really cool part about the framework. You actually make a comment using three slashes. The contents of that comment are what's gonna be in the help system. We'll just do the first argument and then the second argument. So we're gonna put some simple comments there. And in main.rs, let's delete all this. We're gonna do mod args and then use args, rustflix args, get rid of standard env. We also have to use clap parser here. So this should be all we need to do to get that auto-generated help system. Let's take a look. Let's see if we can see those comments in the help system. Now we can see our comments actually in line in the arg section of the help system. Now that we've looked at how to create a simple argument parser, let's look at something a little bit more complicated. Now I'm not gonna go through every structure that we use for RustFlix, but I'm gonna go through users because that demonstrates all the concepts that we need for videos and views as well. The first argument that RustFlix is gonna take is what's called a subcommand. A subcommand is actually an enum value, which dictates what arguments the program should expect after that argument. And we specify that a struct field is a subcommand by using a clap macro called subcommand. This subcommand is gonna be user, video, or view, and so we're gonna call that entity type. Now we need to implement this entity type enum, and we're gonna derive from the subcommand trait. Again, there's gonna be three possible values, user, video, and view. And we're gonna add some comments for our help system here. These values that we have in the enum represent the structures with the fields that the program should expect for that subcommand. We're gonna implement user subcommand, and that's actually gonna derive the args trait. The next thing after the word user is gonna be an action, create, update, delete, or show. And so that's gonna be represented by the user subcommand, which is another enum. So now after this subcommand, say if the program is run with user create, the next arguments that we're gonna expect are gonna be the user's name and email address. So we're gonna need a struct that contains those fields. That's gonna implement the args trait as well. And that should do it. The three main traits we're using here are args, parser, and subcommand. A lot of programs will only need a structure that implements the parser trait if the value of a given argument is intended to dictate the type and number of arguments that come after that argument, that would be a subcommand. So that's when you'd make an enum value that implements the subcommand trait. And each enum value would reference a struct that implements the arg trait with the fields that are expected after that subcommand. Okay, let's see if what we just did works. Okay, so we got our base help message here. 
Let's just do Rustflix user. Okay, so we did Rustflix user and it gives us a list of subcommands that are allowed for user. Okay, let's try user create dash dash help. Cool. It tells us we need to specify a name and an email address, and it has our comments in line in the help system here. Looking good. All right, so now back in main.rs, we can use a print statement to print out that structure hierarchy that the framework has filled in for us based on the arguments passed in. Let's see if that worked. Rustflix user create bob, bob at ctm.io. Cool. Now we can see the framework has filled in that structure hierarchy for us, and now we can just pull the values out of them and use them as necessary. That was a quick introduction to the CLAP framework for parsing command line arguments. Hope everyone liked it, and we'll see you in the next one.